In recent years, many Chinese people travel abroad and buy luxury goods. Chanel, Hermes, Louis Vuitton, and other luxury goods are all included, and they buy them in large quantities, like mad. Chinese students are often seen speeding around in luxurious sports cars. In the United States, Europe, Canada, and Australia, such things are common. It gives the impression that Chinese people are all very rich. Please note that for convenience, all figures mentioned in this video will be in US dollars. Since the beginning of this year, the Xi Jinping authorities have repeatedly put forward the slogan of common prosperity. On November 28th, Tsai Feng, a member of the Monetary Policy Committee of the People's Bank of China, stated at a forum hosted by Tsai Jing Magazine that the current Gini coefficient is very high. It cannot be said that there is common prosperity in China. Obviously, this is not in line with the theme of the authorities' propaganda. In economics, the Gini coefficient is a measure of statistical dispersion intended to represent the income inequality or the wealth inequality within a nation or a social group. It is generally considered that 0.4 is the warning line for income distribution gap, beyond which the polarization between the rich and poor is more likely to cause antagonism among social classes and thus social unrest. The official media China News reported that China's income Gini coefficient was 0.47 in 2018. According to reports from the Chinese official media, China's economy is growing rapidly. The people are rich, a moderately prosperous society has been built, many mega infrastructure projects have been completed, and the Tiangong space station is orbiting the Earth. But what's really happening in reality? Recently, the People's Bank of China announced that by the end of 2020, the balance of domestic household savings in the country was 14.65 trillion US dollars, an increase of 13.9% over the previous year. In 11 cities, the per capita savings exceeded $15,700. In October this year, the 2021 China Statistical Yearbook was released. According to the statistical results of the average wage of urban non-private sector employees in 31 provinces, the 2020 average annual wage was $15,272. Non-private units include multi-level government organs, state-owned enterprises, foreign investment entities, etc. Overall, the average wage of the non-private sector is substantially higher than that of the private sector. The average annual wage of people employed in private sectors is $9,053. The national per capita disposable income in 2020 was $5,048, with a median of $4,319. Many 50-cent party members and Little Pinks, upon seeing the official data, began to publicize on the internet that Chinese people are rich. China is rich and powerful. But many people have been doubting whether the figures are actually correct. People may be thinking, I don't have that high of a salary, I don't have that much savings, and I look around at my friends and colleagues who are still living the hard life. So many young people are still lying flat and cannot afford to buy an apartment unit. It always feels like something is off. The proportion of middle-income people in the total population is usually used to measure whether a country or region has achieved common prosperity. Setting 60% of the median household income as the lower limit and 200% as the upper limit. People in this income range are considered to be the middle income population. This is the criteria used by the 28 EU countries to calculate statistical income. If calculated according to this criteria, the UK, France, Germany, Norway, Sweden, and Canada have all achieved common prosperity with the middle-income population accounting for more than 70% of the total. Middle-income households in South Korea and Japan are around 60%, and in the United States, about 55.9%. In 2020, China's middle-income population only accounted for about 25%. On December 2nd, at the Sina Finance 2021 Annual Conference and the 14th Golden Kirin Forum, Liu Shijin, Deputy Director of the Economic Committee of the CPPCC National Committee and Vice Chairman of the China Development Research Foundation delivered a keynote speech mentioning that China's middle-income group accounts for about 28% of the total population. 
In May of this year, an article in Taijing Magazine said that the middle-income group in China accounts for 24.7 percent of the total population. For sensitive data such as people's income and savings, the Chinese authorities generally publish averages, but rarely mention medians. According to the analysis of Mr. Wen Zhao, an expert on China issues, the median reflects the actual situation of wealth distribution better. Wen Zhao said that the community where Alibaba CEO Jack Ma or Tencent CEO Ma Huangteng's household are registered, regardless of the per capita income or per capita savings. There's a high chance that all the residents of that community are considered to be in the high-income population. The problem is that the money on their accounts have nothing to do with the general public. The ordinary people still eat instant noodles and work hard to make a living. Wen Zhao gave an example to illustrate: if there are five families, the number of houses they own are zero, zero, one, two, and thirty, respectively. On average, each family owns six point six houses. However, the median, the number in the middle of this set, is one, which is far lower than 6.6. The People's Bank of China announced that the average per capita savings in 11 cities is more than 15,700 U.S. dollars. The Chinese Academy of Social Sciences published a research report on social mobility in contemporary China in 2006. It stated that as of the end of March 2006. In the mainland, there are 3,220 people who own assets exceeding 15.7 million dollars. Among them, 2,932 are children of high-ranking officials, and they have assets totaling 320.7 billion dollars. Their assets are mainly from illegal sources, made possible from the power of their families. The gap between the average and the median can be seen from the monthly salary. In 2020. The average monthly salary in Beijing is one thousand eight hundred and twenty-three dollars, with a median of one thousand and eighty-three dollars. In Shanghai, the average monthly salary is one thousand seven hundred and sixty-one dollars, with a median of one thousand. In Shenzhen, the average is one thousand six hundred and thirty-nine, with a median of eight hundred and fifteen. The median salary is only about fifty to sixty percent of the average, which shows that the income gap is huge. The situation in other cities is similar. On December second, Yang Weimin, deputy director of the Economic Committee of the CPPCC National Committee, spoke at the Golden Kirin Forum. He said that housing prices in some cities had exceeded the affordability limits of middle-income families, posing an impact on the manufacturing industry and on innovation, especially on long-term population growth, which is extremely unfavorable. In June 2020, the average median apartment unit price of the four first-tier cities of Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen was $7,855 per square meter. In 2020, the average median salary in these four cities is $913 per month. To buy an apartment unit in a first-tier city without any other expenses. It would cost 8.6 months of salary to buy one square meter of construction area. If you buy a 100 square meter apartment unit, it will cost 72 years of salary. In 2020, at the closing of the two sessions, China's Premier Li Keqiang said that in China, 600 million people earn less than $157 a month, shocking everyone. On February 25th this year, Xi Jinping announced that China had achieved a full victory in the battle against poverty. On July 1st, at the celebration of the 100th anniversary of the establishment of the CCP, Xi Jinping declared, "Through the continuous efforts of the whole party and the people of all ethnic groups, we have achieved the first centennial goal and built a moderately prosperous society on the land of China. The historical problem of absolute poverty has been solved." 多少个玩儿写收入，多增加收入。那个，你看我这四个，我这四个也写上了，四个呀，一个呢，一年下一千个蛋，连工作都下蛋，四个呢，一年下四千个蛋。大伙看啊，往这看，往这看啊，这是政
，等于四千。那个，给我多增加四四千块钱收入。那、嗯、个，你说这叫他妈啥政府啊？你说啊，这他妈还做假的？你说这他妈真扶贫就是假扶贫吗？大伙说说，那个，这不整老百姓玩的吗？这不是，他给他们都给他妈政府的。国家的扶贫资金都用到啥上去了吧？你说啊，那给老百姓克扣啥样？ However, the reality is that in China, many people still live below the absolute poverty line, and survival has been a big challenge for them. In November, the temperature dropped in Nanjing. To resist the cold, this 86-year-old had to wrap herself in woven bags. In order to make a living, this old lady is standing in the rain selling produce. On November 20th, in Zhoukou, Henan Province, a teenager took his father, who has been paralyzed for six years, to help pick peppers for his neighbor to support the family. This 92-year-old lady is a waste picker. She was so hungry she had to beg passersby for food. These two migrant workers are dismantling the chimney, and some netizens commented that human life is worth less than a few packs of explosives. In Pingdingshan, Henan Province, this 85-year-old man was preparing food on the ground. On March 8th, the National Healthcare Security Administration of China released the 2020 Medical Security Business Development Statistics Bulletin, showing that by the end of 2020, the number of basic medical insurance participants has reached 1.36 billion, and the insurance coverage remained stable at more than 95 percent. On October 22nd, in Nanchong, Sichuan Province. An old man from a rural village stood at a hospital fee collection window, crying in pain. His wife had already spent more than three thousand dollars on medical treatment at the hospital, and the staff just told him that he still needed to pay an additional twelve hundred dollars. The old man was crying in misery as he only had around one hundred and fifty dollars. On November third, in Huizhou, Guangdong Province, a patient was unable to go to the hospital for treatment due to poverty. The family had to make a ventilator themselves to keep him alive. On November 29th last year, a netizen tweeted a video showing an 83-year-old mother carrying liquefied gas tanks to raise medical expenses for her 60-year-old son. China has become the world's second-largest economic power. China's Tiangong space station has been put into operation, and it has built two aircraft carriers. China is seemingly powerful now. But many people are still struggling to survive. They can't afford medical expenses, they can't get enough food, and they can't afford heating. The country may have become powerful, but what's the use if the people are suffering? <laughs>